The problem is we have a smoking beamer. This causes a severe oil consumption and also decreases the life of catalytic converters. So uh, let's take a look and see what we can do to fix that without spending a ton of money. In this video, we'll be covering valve stem seal replacement on the N63 engine. Here we have the all German auto valve stem seal replacement toolkit. And the tool comes complete with everything you need to do the actual valve stem seal replacement and a full set of instructions on how to do the valve stem seal replacement as long along with the instructional card that you'll need while doing the procedure. There is a couple of additional tools that you'll need in order to perform this repair. And before we get into it, let me go over that to make sure you have what you need before you start the job. One of the additional tools is the direct injector removal and installation kit. Here we have made a very easy to use and cost effective kit that is straightforward and requires little to no instructions. The other tool you'll need is the ATA cam timing kit. Here again, we have simplified the kit very cost effective manner and on the chain tensioning device hugely simplified which also makes it a lot easier to use inside the car where there sometimes is restrictions on space. This small tool takes the place of the larger tool that sticks out really far from the engine and also takes the place of the centi-newton meter torque wrench needed to set the preload on the chain. Both the injector kit and the cam timing kit is available on our webpage under AGA tools. This kit also comes with our complete instructions on how to set cam timing and do the chain tensioning. Here we have an engine out of the car mounted in an engine stand to easily show you how to do the replacement of the valve stem seals. To do the actual procedure, the engine stays in the car. We're going to be using the ATA N63 valve stem tool kit, part number 8330-2408-268. Before we start, a couple of important and helpful tips. First thing is install the supplied caps onto fuel injector inlets and also fuel rail outlets. On the high pressure pump inlet port, you will use two of the 14 millimeter orange cap on the rail to prevent any kind of dirt from entering the system. When you have the ATA cam plates installed, the cams are indexed so that you can remove the camshafts without removing the vacuum pump. Make sure you keep track of the components. Used rocker arms may only be used in its original location. Parts location cannot be interchanged. Now that you have the cams out, we're going to prep for valve stem seal replacement. Wrap the timing chain with a shop towel to protect it from contamination. Gently clean the injector bores with the hand brush supplied in the kit. Install fuel injector sealing plug into fuel injector bore on cylinder number one and on cylinder number two. Install fuel injector hold down bracket with seven millimeter hex bolt and torque to 13 Newton meters. Install the two red plugs into the remaining injector ports to prevent debris from falling in. Install the eight straight brushes into the oil return holes. You can install them by hand like this or you can use a pair of pliers like this. The brush goes straight down into the oil return hole with a 90 degree bend towards the lifters. Make sure all eight brushes are installed into the oil return holes. This will prevent a collet or valve keeper from dropping into the engine if it should be dropped. Install the U-bend brush in the oil drain hole located by the exhaust cam. 
Should you accidentally drop a keeper by the brush, don't remove the brush, simply retrieve it with a magnet like so. There are four oil drain back holes located right by the lifters. You want to plug those with white lithium grease. Make sure that there's no debris in the grease from being around a dirty shop environment. This will prevent the keepers from falling into the oil drain back holes. Install cam bracket and cam plate in place where the high pressure pump bracket was removed on the forward journal. Use the factory bolts. In the rear, use the factory cam bracket and bolts to install the cam plate. Install in position LA5. Only hand tighten the bolts. And for the intake, do the same in position LE2. And LE5. Please note that the cam plates are all facing towards the center of the cylinder head. Install the eight black spark plug TDC tools into each one of the spark plug holes. Please note, hand tighten only. Also, there is a very small hole in the center. This allows air to get in and out of the cylinder without causing the engine to be hard to turn over with compression. Insert the TDC flag into the hole of the spark plug tool on cylinder number one. Support the timing chain by hand. Turn the crankshaft over from the center bolt with a 27 millimeter socket until the TDC flag is at top dead center position. It is preferred to turn the engine just one or two degrees past TDC to prevent the engine from rotating backwards once we apply air to the cylinder. Insert the chain holder onto the opposite bank with the triangular pattern fitting into the chain guide and make sure the teeth are aligned into the notches on the timing chain. Tighten the knob gently by hand. Do not over tighten. Remove the flag. Remove the spark plug TDC tool and insert the leak down tester hose into the cylinder you're working on. This will prevent the valves from opening during compression and removal of the valve spring and retainer. Make sure to use a leak down tester. The leak down tester reduces the amount of pressure going into the cylinder. Do not use straight sharp air into the cylinder as it could overpressure the cylinder and cause the engine to rotate. To determine whether you need a right or a left compression foot, refer to the laminated chart that comes in the box. For this next operation, you'll need the lever rod with the compression block, you'll need the rotator handle, the compression rod, the foot for the side that you're working on, plus this ratcheting wrench. Insert the compression lever rod into the cam brackets and slide it to the side. If you're doing the center cylinders, just slide it to one or the other end. Install the left or right foot onto the compression rod according to the laminated card, depending on what valve you're working on. Install the compression block on top of the compression nut. Install the ratcheting wrench onto the compression nut. And finally, in a good position that allows you to work, the rotator handle on top. Insert the assembly so that the foot on the back side enters over the valve retainer. Slide the rod 
into the compression block. By moving the rotator handle from side to side, you can perfectly align the foot on top of the valve retainer. While holding on to the rotator handle and turning the ratcheting wrench, you're compressing the valve spring. Once the valve keepers or collets are fully exposed, remove them with a magnet. Reverse the rotation on the ratchet and release the compression on the valve spring. Keep the assembly together, slide the rod out and pull out. You can remove the valve spring by hand. Remove the old valve stem seal with the pliers included in the kit. Sometimes they can be stuck onto the guide. Wiggle them slightly from side to side. Helps get them unstuck and pull them straight up. These pliers are specially designed for being a good fit around the valve stem seal. They're also made very short with a good lever point on this end so that they work well for here as well as in the very back of the engine where you have the interference of the cowling in the engine compartment when the engine is installed. To install the new valve stem seals, take the installation sleeve that comes in the box and install it on the valve stem. Apply grease to the installation sleeve. Gently grab the valve stem seal with the pliers and slide it over the valve stem and installation sleeve. Push until the seal is seated. By hand, remove the installation sleeve. Insert the valve spring and retainer. Reinsert the assembly so the foot lines up on top of the valve spring retainer. Reverse the ratchet and start compressing the valve spring. Hold the rotator handle in place so that the retainer is centered over the valve stem without making contact. With the valve spring compressed, apply a small amount of grease onto the valve keeper grooves. Here we have the valve keeper installation tool. Since it exists for many different types of motors, make sure it's marked correctly for your type of engine that you're working on. In this case, N63. Let me give you a really quick rundown on how the tool works. Push this pin up. It is called a center collet. Install the valve keepers into the tool one at a time by rocking the jaws from side to side with the fat side into the tool. I recommend doing this on the workbench and not over the engine. It's a nice break. You can stand up straight. The keepers are in there really firm. You can easily walk over to the car and install them. Here we have the lightly greased valve stem as we have it in the engine. Insert the tool over the valve. Rock it slightly from side to side. This ensures that the keepers are fully seated in the grease and pull up. Insert the valve keeper installation tool over the valve stem. Push straight down. Wiggle it slightly from side to side to allow the valve keepers to fully seat in the grease and release the spring tension. While releasing the compression, observe the valve spring retainer and keepers that they don't make contact and that the keepers stay on. Wipe off with a sharp rack the excess grease on the top of the retainer. After wiping off the excess grease, make sure the keepers are fully seated in the valve retainer. Repeat the procedure on the remaining three valves on cylinder number one. Once cylinder number one is complete, transfer the leak down hose to cylinder number two and install the spark plug plug into cylinder number one. Bring cylinder number two up to TDC by turning the crankshaft on the front. Don't forget to remove the chain holder which is installed on bank two. Once cylinder number one and two is complete, transfer 
the injector sealing plugs to cylinder number three and four and reinstall the hold down bracket. Transfer these plugs over here to prevent debris from getting into the cylinders. Once the entire bank is completed, reinstall the camshafts for rocker arm replacement and set cam timing. Once the cam installation and cam timing is completed, it allows you to transfer the chain holder to this side and hold it while performing the same procedure on bank number two. Once the job is completed, we highly recommend that you insert all the tools back into the case in their respective location. This ensures that you have all the tools for the next time and also eliminates the possibility of accidentally leaving any tools inside the engine. To order the product in this video or to download specific instructions for this tool, visit atatools.com. There you'll also find all the other products that we have to offer. If you want to stay up to date on all our products and latest tools coming out, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.